Yeah, yeah, we'll go to the next slide. Two of me is a little weird. And uh, I think you'll admit that's not the happiest face I could do. But, but you know what, it's a screen cap, so I was like, sure, why not? That's me. Up, up. All right. Um, <clears throat> So I was asked to uh, kind of do a little speaking here, introduce, get the conference kicked off, kind of get you riled up before Robert goes. He's got all the meat. Uh, so I'll just see what I can pull up for the next 30 minutes or so. But no, I, I do have some things I want to talk about. Um, so I've been in security for the last 12 plus years. And uh, as many of you have probably seen, it is a amazing place to be in. Uh, you can't really predict what's going to happen next week. If you get bored, just wait a few minutes. Somebody will get breached. Something new will get discovered. There'll be a new type of an attack. And then there you go. You've got something to do for the next few days. Uh, but after you know a decade more of doing this, you start to feel, I think, sad. Sad might be a good word. Um, how many of you gone through the, have the, the roller coaster? There's this period where you're like, this is amazing. We're doing all these cool things. Look at me breaking systems. And then you're like, oh, dear God, we are in big trouble. And then you take the pivot. And you're like, we're, we're just done. It doesn't matter what I do. But if you keep going, you, you'll level back out and you'll say, well, it's just sort of zen-like. You're like, well, here we are, uh, for better or worse. Um, so it's fun. I, I think it's a great time. So I wanted to talk just briefly about you know, what I've seen over the last many years and also why OWASP is important because uh, that's a big angle of what we're doing here. We're all here for OWASP. Uh, so a few, let's do some of the raising the hands thing. It'll be the, the workout for the morning. How many people is this your first uh, non-chapter OWASP event? Wow, awesome. And how many of you are, let's see, developers? That's good. And then, I don't think it's developers or, but what, uh, how many of you are security practitioners and not primarily developers? Okay, so we got about 50-50. Uh, very cool, so that's great. Um, so as others said, thanks for coming out here. Uh, I know it was a tough sell. Hopefully you can be convinced to stay at the event, not on the beach. Uh, what an amazing place and what a great job that they've done setting this up. The, the neat thing about OWASP is the grassroots movement of, of what it is. Uh, for those that might not know, we sometimes do a board, um, a board slide or deck where we talk about the stats of OWASP, you know, what we are, what makes us up. But a couple of interesting facts. OWASP has chapters in over 100 countries around the world, uh, 150 plus chapters in a, over 100 countries around the world. If you look at our mailing lists, our, um, our, our wiki, places people engage and listen, we have over 35,000 people. So when you're taking part in OWASP, you're taking part in the largest concentration of application security professionals in the entire world. There's, there's no one that comes close to focusing on application security at the scale that we do. And that's, that's pretty amazing. So what is it that we are doing? You know, why are we all here? Uh, I think there's some, some daunting facts and figures out there. If you just watch the news, you'll see things like Target, Neiman Marcus, Adobe, Michaels, which was not my fault. Uh, let's see, LinkedIn, Snapchat, uh, we can just keep going. So many big companies keep getting breached. Uh, and it's not because we're not trying to secure them, but the fact is it keeps happening. If you look at the Verizon data breach report from last year, which I'm guessing most of you have all read uh, already, if you have not heard of this, you'll be amazed when you read it. So write that down and go look it up. But a few really interesting stats from that. 75% of the compromise were described as opportunistic. And they also use that same 75%, I'm sorry, 78% that the issues exploited were low difficulty. I think that's really powerful because we get wrapped up in a lot of different things when we think about security. The government angle, um, you know, the term APT, and did anybody wince? Uh, they're all very interesting. But if we rat hole on these, you know, is somebody, you know, connected to my cell phone and turning it into something that's watching the room around me, that's neat and interesting. But when 75% of the breaches are opportunistic with low difficulty, you know, we're not even closing the front door. Who cares if somebody's scaling in through the chimney? And this is a, this is a really big problem. So uh, when we think about security, we really have to get back to what is the threat model? What is it we're looking at? Because we're sure not doing it, doing it well. So when I think about what's going on, um, you know, we could keep saying, let's fix cross-site scripting. Let's fix SQL injection. 
and that's good, we should. But I think we should start to turn that table and say, those issues are table stakes. You know, those are fundamentals. We have got to have those already addressed because the problems are bigger than that. So when I think about companies that I work with, I've done a lot of time in the Bay Area just talking with startups. What are they doing? How are they trying to approach security as they're building new companies? And one of the things that we have a lot of trouble with is just developing security programs. So it's great to try and get all the code fixed and this and that. But again, if you're, if you're pivoting down one path and just focusing on one isolated issue, you're, you know, you're missing the forest uh, for the trees or the reverse, however that, that saying goes that seems to apply here. Um, so one thing that I'd love to see us do more of here in OWASP also is work on saying what security programs work. So how many of you here um, are responsible for security programs in the company you're at? Yes, we need to get this, these people together. Because if you've looked on OWASP, have you seen any resources on how to do a security program? No, no, because we, we don't have it. And if we don't have it, the fact is nobody else out there really does either. And so everybody's just sort of winging it. And I think there's a lot more we can do, a lot better than that. The other thing that uh, I've noticed is a lot of siloed security vision. Although we specialize in AppSec, uh, we need to look broader than that because uh, let's look at the, um, the, the uh, breach at Target, Neiman Marcus. Uh, so there may have been malware on a point of sale device. Uh, if we were just doing an AppSec program, would we say, well, it's malware, we don't concern ourselves about that. It's at the OS layer, so we, somebody else's problem. We've got to bring these teams together. One of the things I did at Mozilla that I found very, very effective is uh, we had all elements or all levels of the security teams in, in one organization. So if it was an application issue or a services issue or the OS or the network, all those people worked together. So there was no, oh, it's somebody else in some other part of the, the org. You know, you sit side by side with those people and make sure you're covering security top to bottom throughout the stack. That was very effective and I think that that is being lost in a lot of organizations. The other thing that I've noticed is the approach to security where we say, developers, here's how you code securely, please do that. And then uh, mistakes happen, we wonder, you know, what happened? Um, I think we're past it. I think we're past the time when we say, oh, well, the developers are dumb. That was a horrible time. That was a black, a dark time for security. Uh, just saying everybody else is, is not smart because they turn around and say, well, you guys can't code either. You're just doing security. And they say, our, our stuff's dumb. But if you think about the incentives, developers are building great apps. They are changing the world with what they build, and they are measured on what features they deliver and what code ships. So it's not really surprising that we say, hey, here's a whole bunch of time you can exert in something that doesn't even count towards what your actual goal is that you're measured on. So I think there's an alignment issue for one. But two, this, this paradigm of saying please code securely and try not to make stake, mistakes is also the wrong approach. What I would love to see is situations where people have to make the right decision and going down the wrong path, taking the horror movie and running down the dark stairs is a lot harder. And what that means is I think that at the, the top, I think we need to work on framework security. I think that when you code in an application, by default, it's going to do output encoding for HTML if it's, if it's a template for viewing. And if you want to do anything different, you have to put in that big tag of, I'm trying to shoot myself in the foot. And that way, all of your systems We'll see that and flag that. Oh. Do you think we can push everything Yeah, so I think uh, the question of do we push everything in the framework? N no. And, and in, when you look at security programs, this is another thing I'm going to get to, you can't push everything into one spot. But what you can do is you can push everything left. Do all the security you can during design. Do all of it you can during in the framework. And in the framework, you hit things as much as you can. The things that trickle through, you have your next step to hit those. You have security in QA, you have automated systems. You keep working through this, so the element of security, the amount of security that a security team actually does is minimal. Because if you do the reverse, you become a roadblock that overflows or breaks. So one of those two things will happen. So anything the security team does has to be because it can't be automated and no one else is capable of doing it. You should be champions of knowledge, uh, spreaders of the security me message, and you should get everybody you can on board to help with that in a way that aligns with their goals. Yeah, go ahead. So, so one of the tools that become incredibly useful is um, when you push everything down to a framework, you not only you know, kind of centralize your, your, your best practices, but you also accelerate the speed of development, right? I mean, if you look at almost nobody does it, right? When you get to Google and you're wondering, 
how do they get so many services out there so fast? And how do they always look the same, feel the same, you know, kind of work the same? So isn't that a nice tool to use as, you know, it's not just security, but your speed of development just increases exponentially when you have centralized frameworks as an argument. You know, because typically it's always an argument, right? Oh, you want to slow me up, right? You want to do a code review, you want me to use this, it slows me up, but it can speed things up as well. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Great points. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, because uh, speed, speed is what matters. If you slow people down, you better have a really good reason. And the, as much as we want to believe it, the purity argument of security doesn't go as far as we'd like. Now, we, we better get some business alignment and, and some reasons why. And there's a lot of great reasons, and we should make those reasons, or make those cases. So I think, I think the biggest thing, we've got to start pushing for secure by default. In the framework, it's hard to make mistakes. After secure by default, after framework security, then you move into security libraries. If you can't do it automatically, then give them the right way to do it. If you ask somebody to uh, create encryption and give them a spec, that is going to be error prone. Give them the library, do it once, do it right. It's just development practices for security. And then lastly, after all of that, then we have secure coding guides where they're saying, okay, you're going into the minefield. You know, we're giving you a knife. This is how you don't chop off your hand when you want to cut that stake. So I think there's a lot of work to be done there. A few other things I want to mention. Uh, things that we really need in the security space. We need knowledge sharing, and we've got a, a damn good organization to do that. So let's keep sharing knowledge through OWASP. The visibility aspect of OWASP is amazing, and we can get the largest mind share in the world to share this information. So I think we're on the right path there. The thing we're not doing well anywhere is metrics. You know, everything we say is, there's, there's some truth to it, and there's a lot of gut to it. Like, does this actually work? Can we measure anything? I think the reason we don't have as much metrics is because that's the next step in the evolution of a security program. You build it, you make it run, and then you start to measure. But if anybody's measuring, we've got to get those numbers out there so we can make some data-driven decisions on what's really working. We also need scale. Security has to scale. When I was at Mozilla, anything we built, if it didn't scale, there's no reason to spend time on it. Because if you can't scale, you're going to get overrun. It's going to flood over the gates. Uh, the other thing when I talked with startups that are starting to build uh, you know, their security programs, there's not many of us out there, like security people, security minded people. So when you look at um, people that provide security services, I think there will be a large increase in that uh, over the next few years because it's something, again, that will scale, that will take the burden off of a security team that's limited and has trouble finding, finding professionals to do that. And then lastly, there's this other notion that I see a lot of absolute absolutism with security. Like this isn't good because it is not secure in this one situation. I think we need to get past that and say in the grand scheme, let's look at practicality and let's look at threat models. If, if you took this group and we said let's make a car, that car wouldn't move. Because there would be, in theory, of course, it could crash and therefore it's not secure enough so we have to build it so it can't crash. And someone could break into it and so we must have bulletproof glass. Like it'd be a million dollar car that wouldn't move. And so if you think about that, you know, what is it that we're concerned about? What could happen? And maybe technical controls aren't always the answer for everything. They, they are for a lot of things. But we've got to put that all in perspective and make sure we're fighting the right battles because every battle you fight, you know, you're asking for people. You're using those credibility points. They're taking away from other deliverables. Uh, and that's an important thing to balance, uh, balance lightly. So a few things I want to point out about OWASP. Um, I've mentioned a few times, you know, I've been on the board for OWASP for many years now. Uh, we've got a great board, we've got great leaders, we have a great staff. Um, OWASP hired an executive director this year, that's Sarah. There she is. You should talk to her if you haven't talked to her. Uh, she has a great team. Uh, so OWASP is totally volunteer run. Everyone, even setting up this event, uh, they may get a free beer because somebody thinks that they should give them a free beer. And you should. If anyone that volunteers, give them free beer. Um, but all the material, totally volunteer. Uh, everybody donates their time. And then we have an amazing staff of seven? Yes. Seven. Seven people that keep the lights on, keep things working, uh, and do amazing things supporting you know, thousands of people around the world, hundreds of chapters. Um, OWASP projects. If you've thought about doing research in OWASP and haven't done it already, check out the OWASP projects. See what people are doing. We have a lot of them. And the reason we have a lot of them is because OWASP is a bed for research and uh, exploration. Some things are great and excel. Some things, we learn things and then shut them down because it wasn't that great. But if you see a project that, spike, uh, that piques your interest, 
Jump in, join the mailing list, send some emails, start to contribute. Similarly, has anyone here made an edit on the OS wiki? Yeah, there we go, there's two, four. <laughs> the, the, the key thing, five. Uh, it is a wiki, and by design we want people to edit it. So I'm, I'm really interested in if you've thought about making a change to the wiki and you've held back because you didn't feel like you could or didn't know how. I'm really interested in that feedback, so send that my way. But also I encourage you to just do that. It's powerful because people contribute to it and we want to get more people involved. So start a project, uh, edit the wiki. Um, a few projects to call out. Uh, we have secure coding guidelines. Uh, there's a bunch of cheat sheets that are, are really powerful to tell you exactly how to do things in a very concise manner. Uh, the Z attack proxy is very popular, made by Simon and team, including Google, Hack, uh, Google Summer of Code uh, projects. The CISO guide, uh, I mentioned frameworks. I am starting a framework security project, so if that's interesting to you, please, please jump on. Uh, join your local chapter. Again, there's a bunch of them. How many people here are from outside of California? Well done. That's awesome. So you have chapters in your areas. Join them. Uh, send your team to these events. They're free, the chapter events. Uh, they're a great way to network, a great way to meet new people, hear good talks. Uh, so I ask a few things as you think about the rest of this conference. Uh, think about how you can share and promote this information. The great thing about OWASP is there's really no ulterior motive. We just want to make the world better and more secure. Uh, it's nice to be involved with that do-good spirit in a uh, relatively scary world in this space. So share and promote that information. Uh, engage with your local chapter. Send people to them. Find out how you can help them out. Uh, it's amazing what donating a room and 200 bucks a pizza. You'll get the top security talent in your city, in your room, just by doing that. And we've done that in the barrier. We have, I started doing what we call social hours, meet and greets, just to get security people to see each other and have the, the hallway con. Because a bunch of you will enjoy the talks, a bunch of you will enjoy what happens outside the talks. So we do that every month in the Bay Area. And just by word of mouth, I've booked out every month for six months. Because every company wants to have that security talent just be in their space. Whether or not they get any of them, they can steal any of them to work for them, just having them there is important. And lastly, contribute. People have started off in, very, in, in a lot of different paths. Volunteer to speak at a chapter event. Talk about what you're doing in your security programs at your companies, what's working, what's not, what's your challenges. Uh, submit to speak at these events. The reason OWASP is great is because all the people contribute their knowledge and we can all learn from that. So that's everything I had. Uh, please catch me afterwards if you have questions, thoughts, anything I can share with you. Uh, I'm super excited that you're all here. Uh, I, I really do think OWASP is an amazing organization and it's the people and the volunteers that make it that way. Thank you.